Hey guys, and welcome for Group H here for the Iron Squid Tournament number two. I'm My name is Kyle Aris, and I'm here with Day9. How are you doing, Sean? I'm doing fantastically. In case any of you missed the previous action from Groups A and B, go on over to ironsquid.tv for those VODs, where we got to see some really impressive results, particularly Group B. I mean, I would say that it's no surprise that creator and life managed to make it through mm, yeah. but at the same time i was really impressed with uh empire casa's performance going one and two with creator uh eliminating seed from the group and then narrowly losing again in the finals i mean really really close yeah you're right it was it seemed as if you know cast just the creator had Cass's number there eventually, despite taking one game off of him in the first series yeah uh, coming back in that second series and creator's just he's he's phenomenal and for for creator to say something like, well, you know, parting is way ahead of me and stuff like that, and we we even still have parting in this tournament yet to come up. There's <laughs> just the wealth of this tournament right now is insane. It's it's really really nice. So today we're going to be doing Group H, that is Nesty, Delphi, Violet, and Thorzane. But in the usual tradition of Iron Squid, we'll be beginning this day's group with a four fun show match. The Heart of the Swarm server was temporarily down, but no problem. Heart of the Swarm players play Wings of Liberty 2. So what, right now we're getting the treat of Demaga going up against Cloud. Yep, Demaga and Cloud. Uh, Cloud has been uh, a little bit vocal recently about how hard his time has been going up against the Zerg. But hey, yeah. that could have potentially changed as of late. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I did two in-depth Day 9 dailies uh, yesterday uh, mm -hmm. and uh, on Monday. Um, yep. exploring the fact that what we see is that from the 7 to 13 minute mark, that's when Zerg is doing all their powering. Yeah. And then from the 13 to 17 minute mark, that's when they have everything except Hive Tech. They're going to have Infestors, the Macro Hatch, all the Zerglings, 1-1, one, one, almost certainly 2-2 two, two if they're on pace. So Terrans have been doing um, the, the standard macro style of getting two upgrade centers, either two armories or two engineering bays, to mm -hmm. strike in that 13 to 17 minute zone. But Zergs have pretty much figured out how to deal with that. They actually delay their hive tech, and this is what has been giving Terrence so much problems. It feels like the three base, perfect macro play, doesn't quite work, you know, unless you're bomber. <laughs> but we've been seeing Pulse succeed by striking in that 7 to 13 minute zone, in the zone when Zergs are powering by heavy use of the Marauder. Yeah, it's it's cool actually to hear that kind of thing because when whenever you see Terrans nowadays really making strides ahead, and it's something that's been overlooked a lot that as you say, the 7 to 13 minute mark, you see people like Lucifer, for example, going for heavy Hellion usage in yeah. that period of time, where Zerg's trying to take their third, trying to maybe sneak a few drones over there. But if they do, chances are they're going to get punished for that kind of play. Yeah, and you know the the what's what's interesting about Lucifron's Hellion play is that he's using it to transition into mech, and this is yeah, one of yeah. the key things that we've been seeing the successful Terran players do. Is interestingly not go Hellion Banshee. The Hellion Banshee play, uh, when you do that and then you go for the Marine Marauder composition, you weaken your later Marine Marauder because you know you're investing so much funds in Hellion Banshee. So naturally your army is going to be smaller, but you know you have Lucifron who's putting on Hellion pressure. If the Hellion pressure doesn't work, he pulls back and then he simply has more Hellions for the next time he's going to be doing his full mech push. So it's exciting to see players sort of aligning their build in that way. And it's sort of, uh, well, actually, we're jumping into the game here, guys. So let's get our intros done and dusted before I continue ranting about what I was about to say. As we do have, spawning up to the top location here as our blue Terran. He goes by the name of ATN Cloud. A nice pickup from alternate attacks. Thrilled to see Cloud on there. Also, in the bottom right corner, the long-standing member of MTW, Dim Maga, who is one of those players who I feel like is will be underrated for the rest of his whole life. Demaga plays a lot, trains a lot, understands how to compete, plays well in tournaments, and yet rarely goes outside of the Eastern European tournaments. Yeah, he sometimes has a lot of visa issues as well. That's one of the main reasons why he yeah. actually gets pinned down by that, unfortunately, for him. But uh, just to come back to the point I wanted to make earlier is that in today's broadcast, we've already brought up. I have a I have a top three Terran foreigners list, uh, and we've already brought up Cass. We've already brought up um, Lucifron, but we haven't talked about the Terran that we actually have in this group. <laughs> so, but I'm sure we'll be getting onto him later. 
Yeah, I'm I'm really thrilled to see what the Terran players are doing in this matchup nowadays. We see Cloud looks like going for the yeah, looks like just going to be going for the standard macro focused play. We'll be going for command center first, and I think he's wisely going to be building it at his ramp. No, he's going to boldly build it down at the bottom here. Um, it's not a particularly risky play to do this, um, but you do have players like Life who are ten pooling, and if Life does something, other Zergs are going to follow suit. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's very, very true. I've seen it quite a few times, actually. I saw it in an Intel Extreme Masters qualifier last night, uh, where Terran was just about to go for the command center first, then the SCV scout spotted the Zerglings on the way, which was a little bit dicey in itself. But Cloud for now just finishing off the wall up at the top of his ramp here. Debug is going to get a whiff of this, and he's just probably going to be playing standard from there on out. God, Cloud doing another bold play, actually going for a single barracks and then going straight for the refineries to get the stupidly fast factory, which is, mm. of course, a reasonable play. Again, what Cloud is saying, all these moves that Cloud uh, are doing is saying, I want to have the strongest 2-2 two -two timing push of all time. Yeah. That's going to be my big goal with this. That's why I'm getting my expansion up early. That's why I'm going for this gas so early. If he did want to go for a more standard uh, timing push on two bases like this, the most common one would be to go two racks. He certainly can still do a two base push, and it certainly will be very effective. I mean, early expanding and doing two or three base pushes yeah. is always effective, but Cloud very much so has been more going down the epic macro route that we see Terran players sort of picking up lately. Yeah, that's that's a very good point to make, because Cloud, just in general, I mean, he's had a few problems recently in terms of dealing with Zergs, but he's still sticking with okay. Macro in okay. most of his games, so that once he feels he is in a comfortable spot, he then takes all of that experience along and lumps it into uh, the better position that Terran might find themselves in soon enough. So, just getting that factory down as well, just that transitioning into those standard re reactor Helium plays, and from there on, we'll see how he wants to actually get uh, a little bit aggressive with that. Yeah, I mean, what's really interesting about this this matchup as a whole is that, well, actually, in StarCraft, you think about the way that the metagame shifts. Mm -hmm. It's going to naturally be very, very rapid at the start. People say, oh, here's a timing push, and someone says, oh, I found out a way to defeat that timing push. Yeah. And then the, that stands until someone, after a long amount of time, finds out a little secret, hidden, sexy build mm -hmm. somewhere in there. And that will slow down over time naturally, because obviously if it was easy to find out, then players would have found it out sooner. <laughs> <laughs> it's naturally going to be more difficult to find out and takes more effort to find out. So what we, would, what we, for instance, see is that Zergs were complaining quite a bit about Terrans for a long time. And then Zergs finally figured out the perfect way to both get the upgrades, the third base, and the layer. And now we're seeing this period where Terrans are just having huge, overwhelming amounts of difficulty. Um, so, I mean, certainly Blizzard is already doing things like uh, helping to buff the Raven, decreasing mm -hmm. the fungal growth range, but those aren't huge, dramatic changes. Even without those, we're seeing slight new little tricks come out of the Terran repertoire that, that are really, really slick to see. Yeah, I, I would agree. It's it's nice to see, though, the, the small little incremental changes in the game to see how, for example, Ravens, just, just in general, oh, yeah. really hoping to see, uh, you know, a lot of Raven usage. We saw a little bit of it at Cologne uh, for Gamescom uh, in the form of people like MVP, uh, but that was really, really kind of late game. I would love to see some builds kind of evolve, like some Rush to Ravens for Hunter Seekers. That would be... That would be pretty darn cool. <laughs> yeah, actually, there's one that exists right now. I mean, it has nothing to do with going on this game. You know what? Let me talk about that Raven in just a second. I feel yeah. obligated to note the fact that Cloud is already, I, I would say, boldly but correctly building this third command center on his low ground. Why can he get away with that? He, of course, scouted his opponent, having not gotten an early gas and having gotten an early third. So that indicates no Zergling speed, so we can boldly build this on low ground without really any fear. And uh, Demaga, on the other hand, is doing the Zerg norm. So, I mean, if any of you are watching and going, man, what's the best way to play out Zerg? Well, just look at look at Demaga. He's doing the, the true standard. Very fast layer, very fast plus one, plus one upgrades. Four gas geysers down. This macro hatch is up. I mean, Demaga's actually doing an impressively accelerated job of this. Um, God, this, this build is actually a little bit faster than even some of the GSL Koreans. Demaga's just 
keep doing this absolutely excellently. Pretty crazy. And look at his creep credit as well. One thing that I like from what Cloud's doing though is, I mean, not only the harassment, which is Banshee, Master, get away. And it will do for now. Um, but Cloud had all of his Hellions just spread around, so just spotting, which is something you not normally see. Sometimes you normally see Terrans actually trying to barrel in there and trying to get some kills. But actually, Dibanga trying to put on a little bit of pressure here. The Zerglings Ooh. will fend them off. And those Hellions for now should be able to get away, but the wall is actually just blocking them off. Oh, wow. Oh, this is going to turn out fantastically for Cloud. He's gobbled up a lot of free Zerglings. How many workers has he lost? Only three in the midst of all that. Cloud actually intentionally leaving that orbital command on the ground to encourage the Zerglings to stay there a little longer. And Cloud, <laughs> what cool micro. That was amazingly well done by Cloud. That was <laughs> something awesome. It almost looked as if they were going in and out in between the SCVs, but the SCVs were on Mineral Walk, it kind of just lined up like that, but it was it was very, very cool. As for now, we have the Pathogen Glands on the way, plus one one going down as well. Look at Damagus Creep Spread! What has this guy been on recently? It's pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. Appears like he's been on those Gosu Pills, Kalaris. Mm. Gobbling up all the Gosu Pills. In fact, it is the legal dietary supplement in the StarCraft community. Ah, he got married. I remember now. Ah, that's that might be why as well. Wait, might... Demaga got married? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh my god, that's so sweet. <laughs> really? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, go Demaga. <laughs> oh. Good for Demaga. Fantastic news. You see, once again, another Zergling step in here from Demaga. But I, I want to note that. You look into Cloud's base, he's doing the very fast 2-2 two -two timing, and you'll see that there is currently 140 seconds remaining. He can do a strike at 14 minutes. He's getting his factories up, but again, he opened a Hellion Banshee. The Hellion Banshee, there are units that will not be used later on in this push. So whereas Bomber uses Marine Tank to defend himself early, Bomber's push tends to have 75 to 100 Marines oh, wow. and 10 tanks when he pushes out. We're going to see Cloud have closer to 50, 60 Marines when he's moving out. The, this is just a straight by the numbers example of how Hellion Banshee weakens that push. So you really do have to do a lot of damage with the Hellion Banshee. And look at this. Look at the timing on this hive, Sean. This reminds me of Demaga of old, just going for really quick hive, grabbing oh, yeah. himself potential Ultralisks as well, which are going to put him in. I, again, in Damaga territory. I remember games watching him like back in the GSL and just going for this kind of play against Terrans on play, maps like Taldry Malta, and it was this is this is scary. This is certainly going to be a little bit of an issue for for the up and coming uh, push from Cloud if those ultras or hive techs, by and large, do pop out. Banshee expending a lot of energy on that fungal growth. The impressive thing to me about Demaga is that with this very fast hive, traditionally you wind up without uh, that many infestors. And yet we mm. see that Demaga has nine infestors, 86 drones, excellent timing. Here comes the push. We see eight tanks and 48 marines from Cloud. Oh, wow. 75 that we would see from Bomber. But we do see that Cloud is at 180 food. Demaga's at 143. Ultra's Cavern going down. Why? Because he doesn't even have time to get up the Broodlord tech. He knows it. Demaga now just trying to... Well, he sees all this coming. He sees the moving on to creep. The Marines are on the way to try and check the fourth location, but unfortunately for Cloud, uh, Demaga decided to take his fourth at a uh, different location. So, Demaga yeah, right now... Yeah, I love this. Oh. It's looking... It's looking... I mean, he's getting his 3-3 as well, and he's getting all the upgrades going that he needs to get going, as well as the Dream Glass. He just needs to buy time for these Ultralisks somehow, some way. Cloud is is looking a bit scary right now. Well, this is an excellent expand positioning from Demaga. It's absolutely brilliant. It has all the open space, all the flanking opportunity that you would need. You can't get separated. You don't run the risk of making your third vulnerable. In a sense, Cloud has to either go for the third or go for the fourth. Contrast that with the normal place to expand, where you can hit the third and fourth in one blow. I mean, excellent expand positioning. Excellent mm, bungles from the mod. Yeah, Cloud's just poking forwards just a little bit with a few of these Marines, trying to find a location to start engaging Demaga. But, I mean, with these these eight Ultralisks are now on the way. They're going to be out soon. He doesn't have Chitinous plating. It's just started now. And he doesn't have centrifugal hooks as well. Uh, that might oh, come that's back to hurt a him. Shock. Oh, that's going to be real surprising. These Ultralisks are going to need to do tremendous work. Ah! Nice clump up. The 
there. Maga manages to snipe a good set of units out of Cloud, now getting the opportunity to advance forwards. This is... This is, again, as you were saying, looking quite a bit scary. 67 Marines out, but back oh. in the main base... Oh, no! Cloud is starting to add himself on more starports and command centers. I really think he needs to begin adding on more barracks. I mean, at this point in time, he only has seven. He needs more like ten. He has a few tanks actually sealed in the main as well, not with his army right now. And, I mean, I guess maybe he's actually going to transition onto Ravens here with these uh, starports, which could be quite cool. I mean, it could be used for Vikings as well, not that the Spire's going down for Demagre, could be preparing for that. But if it goes into Ravens, I'll be, I'll be a very happy chap, I think. Drop from Cloud down in the bottom right, picks off a, a non-zero number of drones, but of course, as we see Cloud, the goal of this drop was not to try to kill off anything. It was to allow this huge push to head to the fourth. Look at that great push by Cloud! Oh, he's closed a lot of the gap here. The Ultralisks are on the way to try and clean this up. One of them is actually staying alive for a long time. Nice fungal growth, blocking down a lot of those Marines, and he's getting good stuff. Oh my god, those fungals across the siege tanks and medevacs as well. It looks like Cloud might get cleaned up so, so easily here by Danaga. An excellent positioning by Cloud, but he just didn't have the tanks sieged up in time. And he's hindering his own marine count by going for those starports so early. I mean, this is the lesson that we are seeing Terrans learn again and again and again and again in the most painful way. You must drill hard in this period of uh, 14 to 18 minutes. You have to pound your opponent to death because if you don't, he's just going to be able to easily tech up to the Greater Spire. He's going to be able to expand. Cloud doing a drop down here at the bottom. This drop does need to deal damage, Pilars. It really does. It needs to somehow, somewhere, with four Marines, seek out that Greater Spire and try and kill that off. But, I mean, <laughs> technically he does have the Star Pots there to start creating some Vikings or the Ravens if he needs them. But he's going to have to deal with Ultralisks and then into Broodlords, which is such a hard thing to deal with as Terran when Zerg can swing so back and forth so easily. I mean, Cloud has exactly one more big timing that he can execute right now, oh but that God. is a huge amount of Ultras. <laughs> oh my God, Dimbaga annihilates that in a matter of seconds. Kalaris, this is this is not looking <laughs> particularly good for Cloud. I mean, Dimbaga's played this off perfectly. I, I can't say I've ever seen 14 Ultralisks too often in StarCraft in proper games, as Dimbaga is... I mean, he doesn't need anything else. He just has 14 Ultralisks with 3 3 and uh, Kaitos plating. But they're, they're pretty strong, Sean. I, <laughs> wow. I mean, Demaga not only is having this huge terror force of Ultralisks up, he has plenty of Larva. 31 up. Fungals rip down the front lines. What do you even build now as. As Cloud, I mean, you think about the usual Ultra Ling straight on over into Broodlord tech and back and forth and vice versa. But if you think about it, if you flood Ultralisks and expansions, if you actually mm -hmm. cut the Ling portion out of that, your opponent is obligated to build things like Marauders and tanks because Marines aren't particularly effective against yeah. that at all. So it makes this transition that we're seeing Demaga do to Broodlords even better. And that's one of the things that ties in early on with Demaga's build in terms of going for that many Ultralisks. You know, he gets all that great creep spread going. If, if Cloud doesn't start shutting that down, which he actually shut down a little bit of it on his side of the map, uh, then that makes the Ultralisks all the more potent when they come along. So Demaga, you know, playing this out from the very beginning, getting a very, very nice composition off, and Cloud is going to have a hard time struggling back here, even with Planetary Fortresses. <laughs> I mean, the Planetary Fortress, indeed the most broken of all buildings for Terran. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> Quite good. I still wish Overseers could goop them up, but there it looks like we see the Ultralisks swarming on in. No amount of repair is going to save that. Cloud's disconnected from this force. Demaga has the Broodlord Infester army ready to greet the very little anti-air force of Cloud. Cloud abandoned his pressure timing a little bit too early, and now we are seeing Demaga just rip it to shreds. Ultra is coming in to clean up the ground army. I mean, you're seeing that this tank marauder composition is roasting these Ultralists relatively easily, but it's the Broodlords that are the real problem. Wait a minute, Kalaris. Yeah. Is, <laughs> is, is Cloud going to be able to break through this? Unsieged tanks? The ideal answer to investors in this late game situation. Excellent answer from Cloud. 
his micro throughout that entire battle was actually pretty darn good by Cloud. I was so impressed by the tank micro killing off some of those Ultralisks. And there's a lot of links flooding in here for now for Demaga. Cloud is slightly down by 30 supply, but he's managed to clean it up. And, well, unfortunately for him, his income is not looking that great. But, you know, he's still, he's still holding his own. He's still trying to keep himself in this. I mean, Demaga is going to do the reasonable thing, which is to just hold a couple of production buttons and mm. pop back in, uh, up to max. He had a lot of money in the bank, and now we're seeing Cloud try to take his fourth base. He must secure this. Look at his third base, even absolutely dead broke on the minerals. Certainly from Demaga going every which way. Yeah, I'm not so sure how Cloud's going to try and pull himself back in. He has a little bit of production. He's trying to secure his fourth base, but still always blocked off by a Ling here and there. Cloud right now trying to recuperate those losses, still producing a lot of Marines. And uh, Damaga, he's he's just transitioning onto, once again, that deadly, brutal army that you were mentioning before. It's just going to be Ultralisk, Broodlords, Infestors, Zerglings, Banelings. And how, how, how can you deal with that when your economy has been completely stifled? Oh, Damaga is going to run right into another push of Cloud, but Cloud is getting the edge in this angle. Those Ultralisks aren't doing as much damage. Now they are. Oh, Cloud stopped his Marines for a second. They all got fungled. They all got ripped to shreds. That plus five armor, a little bit too tough to deal with, even with plus three tanks and plus three Marines. Good game. Yamaga takes game number one. Mm. And I must re reiterate, guys, this is not Heart of the Swamp. This is Wings of Liberty. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just making sure, uh, because... Yeah. Because the, I saw some people in the chat saying, wow, Zerg, Heart of the Swarm, doing really well. But no, it's still Wings of Liberty, guys. Uh, Heart of the Swarm client currently is down, I believe. Is that the right thing, Sean? It's down? Yes. All right. <laughs> I seriously can't get over the joy of imagining people genuinely thinking that this was Heart of the Swarm. And they're like, what What the hell, man? He's just building Marines. They're just building <laughs> Fessars. Just getting so wounded internally, and then go, oh, it's, oh, it's wall. We uh, call it hots, but does anyone call it wall? I called it wall once or twice, but you're right. Nobody calls it wall, really. Yeah. It's, it's kind of weird. Oh, well. Well, either way, we will be going on to a game number two on Daybreak in just a moment. So please, please, we encourage you to stay, because we'll be going to a quick break, and we return a little bit more TBZ action.